Hey there, Victorum Gaming fans and fans of Black Seas from Warlord Games. Today we got another video, and we're going to be taking a look at the ship upgrades, which can also be used on the fortifications, but we're basically just going to uh, read through the list here, take a look at it, have a little discussion, and uh, see what's good, maybe not so good, and so on and so forth. So, um, so as it says here under ship upgrades, these may be added to ships with a maximum um, allowed as follows. No ship can have more than one upgrade of the same type, and fortifications may never take upgrades. Um, so, um, as I say here, so maximum upgrades per ship, so the extra larges, those big, super first rates, uh, four, large three, medium two, small one, and then tinies, which really are just the gunboats right now, I think, um, you know, don't get any, which makes sense. Um, they're just too small to actually have some of these upgrades. So, um, moving on to the list of upgrades. So there's a whole bunch in the game and, um, you know, it can be a little bit bewildering on, you know, which way to go and, uh, what is really going to be effective. So obviously it's going to depend on what kind of ship you have. So what size you have, what your, um, what your sort of intended role for that ship is or ships, you know, if you're kind of like grouping them together in like a squadron or anything like that and kind of like your overall game plan and things like that too. So, you know, if it's just like a one-off game, obviously you can experiment and try all kinds of different things. But, you know, if you're playing something like a tournament where you're going to have to keep the upgrades over, you know, let's say like two, three, four games, whatever it might be, um, you kind of have to um, think... Um, uh, across multiple scenarios and uh, multiple opponents and things like that, and, you know what uh, what is going to be the best uh, in the most situations, basically. So, uh, if we start off with uh, the first one here, which is also one of the cheap ones, uh, boarding nets. And again, there's several upgrades that focus on um, the different phases of the game. So, you know, there's boarding, there's uh, maneuverability, there's firepower, basically. So, um, some of these are. Uh, in different kind of groups, but I'm not necessarily organized that way here. But anyway, boarding nets. So 10 points, so not all that much. Opponents suffer a minus one penalty to all grappling attempts against this ship. So uh, pretty cool upgrade, and um, you know it works all the time, basically. And yeah, for just 10 points, um, having that uh, little uh, debuff against them is actually pretty solid. So, um, you know, especially if you just don't like being boarded or, you know, you're in a... Uh, spot where that might ha hamper uh, what you're trying to do with that particular ship or ships. Um, how many, depending on how many times you take that upgrade for your various ships, um, that can certainly um, earn its points across the game. So especially every time they fail to uh, grapple, um, you know this thing's paid for itself. Uh, along with that, grappling hooks on the other side of that, really. Um, so uh, for 20 points, gives you a plus one to the skill test to grapple an opponent. So. Um, so, you know, if you're on the offensive side and you're um, trying to uh, board enemy ships to uh, take them over, basically, um, and wipe them out, um, you know, it's still a pretty reasonable point uh, cost and uh, really, um, you know, that's all, there's all, that's all there is to it. So, um, and again, certain people, uh, certain, like, if you're playing with any of the, like, uh, national rules or special characters, things like that, or even special named ships. Uh, so was, uh, that can certainly tie in with some of the other uh, characters that we've discussed in other videos and stuff like that. Uh, on the other side here, um, grenades add plus one to the target number on all boarding actions. So for 30 points uh, ticking up there. So those all uh, dealing with boarding there. And again, um, buffs and debuffs for that um, stuff that's active all the time throughout the game. Um, those uh, tend to pay for themselves uh, when those situations come up. So um, there's, there are some upgrades here that are kind of like one and done. So um, those are a little bit more high risk, high reward. And, you know, if you don't get your reward out of that, that's the points wasted. But these things that are active all the time are definitely worthwhile. So that is three of those on boarding actions there. Lucky is kind of an interesting one too. So um, for another 30 points here, so this is one of those once per games, um, uh, re-roll all the dice in a single skill test, shooting attack, or boarding action, even successful ones. You must accept the second result. So, um, you know, uh, having that uh, sort of ace in the hole, uh, you know, you set yourself up for a great uh, shooting attempt, but you just, you, you whiffed. Um, you know, it happens to everybody, um, sometimes even with some of the, like, what you might think is, you know, like a surefire thing. Oh, I'm definitely going to be hitting on this. The stats are in my favor or whatnot. And then, you know, the dice gods come and wreck you. So um, having that ace in the hole um, is pretty cool. Now, 30 points is a, a good little chunk of points there. Um, so putting this on, you know, smaller ships and stuff like that um, might not be worth it. But um, considering it for like, a, you know, something like you're maybe a third rate or certainly first rates for like a flagship, something like that, um, certainly, um, definitely... 
uh, you know, has a, an argument in its favor there. So, yeah, just being able to re-roll all of that um, is, uh, is is pretty cool. Uh, going on to some other things here. So, uh, Master Carpenter. So, plus one to the skill test to repair damage. So, for just 20 points, again, active all the time. Um, certainly, again, on bigger ships makes more sense. Um, especially to, with uh, all the extra, like, hull points and stuff that they have. So, um, yeah, for just 20 points, being able to have that plus one to your skill test is, is pretty dang awesome. So definitely a good one there. Um, next up, Master Calker, um, another 20-pointer. When attempting to repair damage, repair an extra two, even if the skill test has failed. So this is actually, um, maybe put like a little star next to this one. This is an awesome one. Um, and really, if you're going all out and kind of like defense and repair and sort of longevity, if you can afford both of these on a bigger ship, um, that's actually pretty damn awesome. So the carpenter will make it more likely that you're going to repair the damage, and then the caulker will will uh, basically help you um, get those extra points back, even if you're uh, even if you fail. So um, why would you uh, if you ha if you can spare the the upgrade points for this? Um, why would you not take it on some of your bigger ships? Um, so uh, again, extra points back. Uh, you know, the longer you can stay alive and functioning and getting away from basically like striking the colors, um, the the better it is for you. You, right um you know if your opponent is struggling to put you down um and you're able to start or repairing and getting those extra points that just um you know the longer the game goes um and the longer you're active uh, the the better it is for you so um that's a that's an awesome 20 points right there uh <clears throat> excuse me uh moving on uh, a little bit of offense here um for 30 points a master gunner so the first time the ship shoots in the game it can reroll any misses so this is one of those one and done things right so 30 points again is a a solid little chunk of upgrade points here. Um, is it worth it on small ships? You know, questionable. Probably not. Um, as you get up in size, though, you might consider that. Um, eh. Now, the thing is, of course, if you, um, uh, you know, let's say you you have to, you whiff on your first attempt, you have to reroll your misses, and you still get nothing out of it, then it's basically 30 points wasted. So, um, so you know, something to consider. It's definitely, you know, another one of those risk and reward things, one time per game. Um, and, uh, you know, heaven forbid that you, um, your ship just gets blown up uh, uh, before you even have a chance to, like, use this somehow. So that would, that would uh, be sort of extra salt in the wound there. But, again, another one of those to maybe consider on something like a first rate, I think, um, or if you're not playing with those, you know, whatever your biggest ships are, um, just make it, getting that maximum value out of the first time you shoot um, uh, should be um, something to consider. But, again, uh, depending on the size of the game, stuff like that, um, you know, you, you got some other factors to consider there. But, um, again, the one once per games are um, definitely a little uh, uh, risky, so you definitely want to make sure you're Putting it on the right ship, using it at the right time. Uh, in this case, uh, the first time you shoot, so um, take like a you know a higher percentage shot if you can. Um, make sure you can get all your guns to bear and all that stuff, or most of your guns in range and all that fun stuff, just to get the maximum value out of that. You really wouldn't want to waste this on like uh, something where you don't have a lot of attack power. So um, then we come to the big boy, um, the hundred pointer here. Um, lots of ships. Uh, uh, that we've looked at in our faction reviews, some of the um, ships get this upgrade for a discount. Um, so overgunned, so 100 points. So this is serious, a serious point investment here. Um, and um, as it says here, not available to unrated ships. So um, basically um, like brigs and uh, obviously the, the gunboats and stuff like that. Um, but what it does, it adds a uh, heavy and a light um uh, basically to each broadside. So you're basically buffing your attack power on each side. Um, fantastic upgrade. Um, 100 points is steep, so you know, you're not going to be able to necessarily take this too many times depending on the size of the game you're playing. But you know, slapping that on a, f a flagship of yours, whether you, know, you got like a third rate, first rate, um, just makes those even scarier. Um, and again, uh, with if you're playing with like faction rules or even some of the special characters, stuff like that, um, you know, um, uh, it's a... Uh, when you get that at a discount, that's uh, even better. So, um, and especially like, you know, Americans, I think get that on uh, their frigates. I think we saw uh, at a discount. So, you know, anything that can help the, um, the uh, U.S. fleet, for example, uh, sort of punch above its weight a little bit um, since they don't get the bigger ships uh, is, is useful. But for everybody else, again, still um, extra firepower on each side. Um, you just got to have the points for it. So um, you don't want to just randomly stick that on each and every ship, although that could be interesting, be a smaller fleet, but um, certainly 
uh, a little scarier on the firepower, but, um, you know, uh, usually a sort of a little bit of a diversity in your fleet and stuff like that uh, can help. Um, I suppose just kind of putting all your eggs in one basket because, um, again, the dice will um, mess with you at the worst possible time. Everybody knows that as a gamer, um, the dice will turn on you. So, um, but overgunned, uh, the bi single biggest uh, point uh, cost here on an upgrade, but also um, just straight up adding firepower. Um, similarly, more carronades is specifically just for adding extra carronades. So um, half as many points, but um, adds a carronade to each broadside too. So, um, you know, if you have uh, an already decent or good carronade stat, more firepower um, certainly doesn't uh, doesn't hurt. Um, or if you have a weak uh, carronade stat, um, or uh, I don't know if that will work if you don't have any to begin with. Uh, that would be interesting. Um, I have to imagine it would. But, um, you know... Um, it's again just more short range devastating firepower so um now if you wanted to kind of go all in on offense here um you know 150 points uh you know add basically one of each to your broadsides that's that's definitely a scarier ship um but again that's 150 points you invested on that as opposed to maybe just having a couple extra ships to begin with so um you know it just depends on your play style i guess and what you feel is um is best for your ships, but again, um, a pretty cool upgrade there, and uh, definitely makes you uh, scarier to be, uh, you know, in that close range engagement. Then we get to some cheaper ones again here. Um, so Privateer uh, is just a ten pointer, so you get plus two to grapple attempts and roll uh, two extra d10s and gain plus two to hit in boarding actions against merchant ships. So um, that's a whole hell of a lot of stuff there for just ten points. Um, you know, so a plus two bonus, uh, t a couple of plus two bonuses, and two extra d10s um, against merchant ships. So uh, more uh, scenario-based, really, but um, uh, still just really cool. And we saw when we did the faction reviews that there's um, some of the people get bonuses against privateers and stuff like that. So um, things to consider there, too. Um, but, um, yeah, with all the, the new merchant ships and stuff like that, um, so it definitely adds another dimension and flavor to the game. And, again, for just ten points, if you're playing with... Uh, merchant ships and stuff like that or any scenarios that use those um that's uh that's a really solid upgrade there um the next up one is uh sharpshooters so uh when you use musket fire again you get to reroll a skill test so and again that's always active so if you're in that range where um you know musket fire is is a, is a factor being able to reroll on that for just 20 points is pretty solid as well um, so, um, doesn't really need much more in the way of explanation there. Again, always active and, uh, a reroll is always great. Uh, for 30 points, we get a ship, uh, surge in here. So for each hit suffered during a boarding action, make a skill test on a success, take no damage for that hit. So this seems actually pretty dang powerful. Um, so basically, um, as a way to sort of negate um, or mitigate uh, damage that you're taking if you do get boarded so um, you know if you want to you could almost go with like a, a bigger ship like a sort of a very anti-boarding setup with uh, like the boarding um, nets and stuff like that and um, uh, you know grenades and all that fun stuff and then um, have your surgeon and stuff like that so just making it uh, very um, risky and tedious um, for an opponent to try and uh, board you. So um, so a surgeon definitely does a hell of a lot of work here, assuming you make your skill test. Streamline hull is pretty cool. We saw that, uh, I think, on some of the French ships, um, but neat upgrade here. So add one to the uh, rate of knots the first time it moves per activation. So um, so basically, yeah, you're just adding speed to your ship here for 30 points. So um, and especially with some of the slower ships out there, um, just being able to get that speed. Or if you already have some faster ships, uh, getting that extra distance and, you know, winning the maneuverability battle and getting yourself into favorable, um, positions, um, is, is, uh, is a pretty key, uh, factor there too. So, uh, 30 points, uh, so not too bad there. And I think there might be some discounts in some of the factions. Um, uh, so definitely go back and check those videos. But, um, you know, if you're getting more movement, uh, than your opponent, um, ideally you should be able to do more with that. So, and sometimes that extra inch, um, can make the difference in just getting you either out of a tight spot or, um, getting you into a, a good spot, uh, that's advantageous for you. 
then uh, we get another sort of bigger upgrade as we get towards the end here. So for 60 points, and again, I think there are some discounts available there when we looked at the national rules and stuff like that. Um, but sturdy basically adds 20 ship points to the current total. So basically 20 hull points or hit points, however you want to look at it. So it just adds some uh, uh, life basically to your ship, so some damage capacity. So um, is it worth it again on um, a lot of these smaller ships? questionable it's a, it's a good chunk of points might just be better to get more smaller ships um but um you know you can definitely throw a curveball to an opponent and stuff like that if some of these ships have uh you know a, an extra chunk of points like that um and certainly on your bigger ships um you know definitely a good one to consider again for like whatever your main ship is your flagship or something like that your biggest ship um you know that extra 20 hull points uh that might buy you an extra turn or so um of staying alive uh so um Definitely a good one to consider. Then for 30 points, uh, we get what's called swivel guns. Before the first round of a boarding action, make a successful skill test to inflict four damage on the enemy before any uh, further action takes place. So, uh, And the way that uh, reads there, so basically whether they're boarding you or you're boarding them. So um, again, just making it very... Um, uh, high risk for someone to board you or just adding more um, uh, in the way of your uh, success uh, to your boarding actions there. So um, certainly worth it if you're planning on um, having that happen a lot. So again, definitely geared towards boarding. But um, yeah, just a, an extra four damage on the enemy before anything takes place. That's uh, pretty nasty. And then last up, but not least, is another 30-pointer, Trained Marines. Add one to the hit uh, target number on all boarding actions. So again, a whole lot more with boarding. Um, so uh, again, like if you're building a, a, you know what I would probably call like a more aggressive fleet and you're trying to get in there, get close, um, and kind of win the battle through like sort of direct action, you know, boarding uh, multiple ships and stuff like that. Um, again, a good one to consider. Again, just a static ability that's active all the time. Um, and you, know, you got to make, uh, make the most out of it, but... Um, yeah, you know, anything you can do to make it better for you to board while, um, you know, making it um, a little bit uh, more difficult for the opponent to deal with you and um, uh, boarding and stuff like that, too. Um, so all these various boarding upgrades, um, there's definitely a lot to consider. They're almost a, sort of a little strategy uh, sub-phase of the game there where, um, you know, what you... If you're, if you're really good with boarding um, and uh, can really build a fleet to take advantage of that... Um, there's there's certainly a lot to be said for these various boarding upgrades, and you just gotta um, plan for that uh, and organize your fleet and try and get into the best uh, spots and make the most out of that. Um, you know, you certainly uh, can't uh, necessarily afford to give that to like each and every single ship and go um, all out with upgrades for boarding on every ship. You might not get. Um, a whole lot uh, out of that. Um, you'd probably end up with a small, much smaller fleet, but um, certainly spreading out and sprinkling out these uh, boarding buffs uh, and upgrades throughout your fleet, um, if you want to go for that, um, definitely can be pretty scary and um, might catch uh, you know opponents off guard a little bit who might prefer more like a uh, a distance battle, like a gun line battle, stuff like that, or just you know prefer to stay away and not get up close. So um, a lot of times, if you can force people into uncomfortable situations that they're not used to dealing with or don't know how to deal with in a, in a game like this. Um, that alone is uh, kind of like almost an invisible upgrade. Um, so, and, you know, and also if they, for whatever reason, let you get that close and they're not expecting uh, a boarding action or don't necessarily um, grasp uh, the the way all this would work with you with your various upgrades and you know um you can certainly catch people by surprise and um take some of their uh their best ships out of the out of the game with that so um so there's definitely a lot to consider here these definitely add a whole lot of flavor to the game um a lot of wrinkles a lot of different uh, ways to um uh, sort of update and in, improve your tactics and your overall strategy for your list building and stuff like that and whichever nation you happen to be playing. So um, definitely a cool set of upgrades. And again, um, whether you're taking advantage of the national rules, don't forget your like discounts that you get for the various upgrades. Um, that can be useful too. Uh, but if you're just playing more of a straight up, I would say you know, like a tournament that maybe is not allowing national rules or stuff like that. Um, uh, and you just got to build a you know, just a, a straight up list. Um, definitely, again, worth checking a lot of these out um, and coming up with an overall strategy for your fleet um, that can do the best uh, across, you know, multiple rounds, multiple scenarios, 
planning for different types of opponents and all that stuff. So again, there's uh, many, many things to consider, but um, very cool that um, we do have these upgrades. And uh, at some point, you know, they'll, um, with more expansions and stuff like that, I imagine we'll see some other ship upgrades and stuff like that too. So, uh, but if you guys have enjoyed the video, uh, hit us uh, with a like and a subscribe if you haven't already, and then stay tuned for some more Black Seas content.